Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. This is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marco of Living Streams International with the church behind the trade fair called Life Cathedral, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. Keep your eye always on Graphic Online because the kind of information that you get, credible information, which is very important and powerful. But today, I'm still on a particular portion of scripture called Luke chapter 5. And Luke chapter 5 is one of the most interesting things to me, in actual fact, I have a book called Fisherman's Roadmap on it, a roadmap of a fisherman. But here's another principle from it. In Luke chapter 5, you remember, now Peter had toiled all night, and the Bible said he was, Luke chapter 5 from verse 3 onwards, Jesus, after having finished preaching of, from verse 1 onwards, after having, uh, he passed through the lakeside called Genesaret, and then he met a fisherman over there, and he borrowed the abode. But I like to capture exactly the condition and the state in which he met them. The Bible said when he met Peter, who had told all night, they were washing their nets. They were washing their nets. Now, it's, it's a very powerful principle for me. Normally, when uh, I come from uh, a town with uh, quite some fishing that goes on over there, a famous fishing uh, town called La, the only area of, of Africa. Now, normally when they go fishing, and then sometimes they, they come back, for the Bible to say that they were washing their nets, it means the net had captured what we call bric a brac, had caught some things and, you know, and all those things. So nets all tangled up, Nets all, you know, with, you know, you, you, you collect debris, you collect, you know, people throw things into the sea. So you collect um, all those bric a brac of, of the sea. And so sometimes you need to free the nets. And sometimes maybe the nets can even be torn or something like that. Because of some of those things, uh, article, uh, items in the nets can have sharp edges and all that. So sometimes they, they cut uh, the nets. And the Bible said, Peter, instead of going home, decided to sit and wash his net. Wash the net from the salt of the sea. Wash the net of the bric a brac that they may have collected. Wash the net, free the net, mend the net, patch up the this thing. You know one of the things? Peter had gone, toiled all night and caught nothing. That is a position of failure. But Peter was saying to himself, there is another day coming. And because there is another day coming, even though I have failed, I'm going to mend my nets. I'm going to wash my nets. I'm going to wash the nets of failure. I'm going to wash the failure of the net. I'm not going to allow the failure to hold me. There's another day coming. There is a new day coming. I'm going to live up. Even though I've seen failure, even though I've, I've tasted failure, I'm getting ready for the next day. That was the posture of Peter. Meanwhile, you know, you remember, Peter said, we have toiled all night. That means he and other people who had other boats, they had toiled all night and caught nothing. But Jesus didn't go to them. He went to the one who was living for tomorrow. He went for the one who had hope. He went for the one who was saying that, yes, I have failed. But I'm not going to allow the failure of yesterday to hold me captive. I'm not going to allow the failure of yesterday to be a prevent." measure that holds me back to yesterday. There are many people who are slaves to yesterday. There are many people whose memories are so choked up with failure that they don't have the courage and the guts to step out for tomorrow. I refuse to sit in failure. He was ready to go out. He said, that's not it. So far as there's life, there's hope. So far as I'm not lying in the grave, I'm going to keep fighting. And that's one of the things that I love about Peter. He was washing the net. He was mending the net. That means he had a desire to live again. He had a desire to see, to go out again. He said, I, you, you made me lose today. I'm going to get out fighting. You know, there's a famous boxer I like, Muhammad Ali. Oh boy. 
The first time I saw him be beaten, losing a fight, I cried because that was my, my, my idol. That was my star. That was my hero lying on the floor. But oh, man, he sprang up and he took the belt again. Listen, the God we serve is the God of a second chance. The, the failure of yesterday is not the end of your story. Like Peter, wash the nets, get ready, look up for tomorrow because there's something that is coming tomorrow that is bigger. Did you fail? You caught nothing? You caught brick a brack? Let me say to you, there's a great drought coming. Wash the nets, mend the nets. You know, that means leave for tomorrow. Your story is not yet over. Leave for tomorrow. God bless you. See you next time.